Hey guys, okay, today is going to be the last in our getting to know your uh, MISO so Net software um, series, and it is going to be on digitizing. So I am going to stress that the digitizing module is huge and that there are is so much to it. We are just going to go through it kind of quickly. Um, it This isn't to... Um, learn to digitize it's just getting to know that module so that when we do go to start learning how to digitize you know kind of what i'm talking about and where it is so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our mysonet and we're going to choose tools this time and we're going to go to digitizing now if you already have your software open you can just go to the uh, create tab and go to digitizing through there either way is perfectly fine um, it gets you the same place. Okay, so when you open your digitizing software, the first thing you'll see is the design wizard or the express design wizard. So the first one is create express Des embroidery. This is going to be the same thing we did on the quick create or the um, create tab in our main software where we did the express embroidery into hoop or rectangle. You basically pick a, an image file and you're going to use that to create an express embroidery. The difference is, is that you can edit it, edit it in this module. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. So we're going to hit next, load a picture. And we're going to go to, where's that documents, 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 and then my sonnet, and then samples, samples again, and then click on the digitizing one. Um, EDO. EDO is the file that is saved in Create. So um, remember how I told you that if you save it in um, your regular software, it saves as VP4 only because it retains more information. I hope I told you guys that. <laughs> if I didn't, well, there it is now. Um, this saves it and then cross-stitch was the KRZ. Well, digitizing is the EDO. This is an edible digital object, I think is what it, it stands for. Um, but um, this allows us to um, change anything and everything. It retains all information. But we're going to go ahead and choose picks. And we can go ahead and grab, um, let's grab one of the little stacking dolls or nesting dolls. So I did the second one and say, OK. So there she is. And next, crop your lines in just like we've done before. This is all pretty standard. Next change my hoop really quick. I was using a really small one and I'll do a 120 by 120, say okay, and then next. Okay, so it automatically removes the background because I have that checked. If I didn't, it would put that background there, but we don't want that. There is an option to remove main background only, which is just gonna be that one. Or if you had like the letter P and you know how there's the hole in the center, you would do all, remove all background colors and it would pull that background out of there. Um, there's 14 colors, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I count 11 unless I miss something. Let's see what happens and apply. Still looks good. So I'm going to take that as a go. Going to hit next. Okay. And there she is. Um, this will give you a better, more precise stitch out than the um, embroidery module does. Um, she looks pretty good. Um, you can change fill to satin. So if I wanted to go up here and do satin um, and refresh preview, it turns her more satin, which is definitely not what we want. But you could do maybe a half part still not good and then we'll go back to fill and refresh preview okay so it still looks pretty good um fabric you can change what you see on it it's not going to really miss and mess with anything you can add an underlay so if you were doing this on terry cloth you would want that underlay to help hold down that nap 
Um, but we are not going to do that, but that's what that does. Oops. Okay. And fresh preview. And then finish. Okay. So now the difference you'll see right away over here on the left, you now get to play with every piece of this design. So see how there's those weird little green lines there? You can easily locate that color, locate that design, and then hit your delete key, and it will remove those. Remember how before we had to go into the modify, uncheck everything, and go grab them? This isn't that. This literally takes it each step. Every piece is there so that you can alter every piece. Um, a lot of times if I have a design that um, I am doing for my graphic image that I've created or whatever, um, a lot of times I will try this. I'm very picky, so most of the time I do manually digitize it or I plot my points, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, so like, let's say this part right here, this blue part, um, I really think it should be under the yellow. So what I would do is I would come in here and I would grab that piece. Now the eye pieces can technically go before the yellow as well. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to select all of them by hitting my shift key and hitting the bottom. And I am going to drag them to the top. Ah, much better. So that's going to put that eyeshadow back behind that black where it should be. And it's going to put this under here so it looks much nicer and neater. Um, this part, this yellow part of the leaf right here, I don't like it as satin stitching. So I can come down here, locate that part, which is going to be not that one. There it is. And I can select both of them and I can right click and go to properties. And from satin area, I'm going to change that to pattern fill and say, okay, that's going to change that to that pattern fill. And it's going to look so much better. You can also edit points. So let's say that I didn't like how um, this, it kind of cuts down. I can edit the points. Oh, that's because the white's on top of it. That's okay. I can drag it down and see how that white's on top of there. So we don't want that. So let me go change this real quick. Uh, put this back up here. Oops, where's my blue? Oops, that's what's wrong. There we go. Okay, so now we can fix it. Wow, everything seems to be, the order of this is really odd. This should be for the other as well. There we go. Okay. Now back to what I was doing. So we click on what we want and then we say edit points. And then I don't know. Let me zoom in real quick and show you this weird thing. See how this came down here? We definitely don't want that. So we can click on edit points and we can even move this just right back up where it goes. Um, this one should go over here. Oops. Now notice if you notice how this actually comes down into the peach color. And how this kind of actually, oops, I actually want this to come up a little higher. Okay, this is what's considered an overlap. If you did not put some of this underneath the other things, then you would have a gap when it stitches out. So it's really important when you do this that you have that gap or that over overlay so that when you're stitching out that it it will cover and not separate because on screen it looks real good but you have to take into account the um when you're stitching on something it's actually pulling that fabric in so if you don't have that overlap then you, when it's stitching, it will separate. I hope that makes sense. You'll, you'll see later on when we get more into this. Okay, so that's basically how you can do a few things. So now that we have something up on our screen, I'm going to go over the ribbon bar and the tabs and everything that's on here. So this is our home tab. 
And whenever you're on this, you have your copy, your paste, your delete, your box select, like always, rotate, modify block. Now, remember, this is not a design until you export it. Once you export it, it is then a design. You can make any changes to an EDO file, whether shrink it down four inches, um, increase it by five inches. It is going to automatically calculate that and fill in perfectly because this is an editable object. So you can do all those things. So having these EDO files is a big um, plus to do it this way. So making your own design gives you the ability to change sizes on your WEN. So right now it's 95 millimeters. We're going to take it down to 50. Watch our design panel. The information right now, it's 14,440 stitches, 10 colors, blah, 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 blah. When I do this, it automatically takes it down, makes it going to stitch out as good as it possibly can. And it's going to be that small. Now you see this image in the back. That's just an image. I don't know what this is. That is an interesting thing. What is that? We're going to delete that. I have no idea what that is. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, so you have your little doll. You can then quite simply move it back up or was it 95? Now it's 75. I'm not sure on that. Oh, I don't think it'll, oh, it doesn't like it because my hoop's big. Hold on. I was like, why is this not working? There we go. And now I can change design size. And now I can do, there we go. Okay. And so it went from 14,400, 14,400 to 32,000. And again, you're getting that really nice stitch out because it is it is just increasing and decreasing and it doesn't have any limits. Remember how our main software has limits. 20% is the base. EDO files or digitizing have no limits. Okay. Group works just the same as in anything else. You can select multiple items and group them so that they move together. Group. And then you can move those together and do that. And then one group. Okay. Rotate 45 is going to do whatever pieces you have and rotate them. Um, just make sure whatever you select, you have selected or of course your undo button. We went over modify block. There's modify block where you can do um, just tiny measurements, keeping them proportional. You can rotate it, the whole thing at a certain angle, blah, blah, blah. Um, scale to fit hoop, we just, you can make it so that it fits that entire hoop. And then, oh, and I do want to mention, these adjust the whole thing. It, it, it doesn't matter if I had the hair selected and only the hair selected, it's going to adjust the whole design, not just that element. Edit points, you saw that. Insert points, you can actually insert points to make it different. You can delete points to make things go away. Convert points. Um, <clears throat> you can use this to convert them to a corner, which is the, uh, uh, the square handles that we use when we hit shift. So if you wanted to do convert points and you wanted to change these all, uh, okay. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> you have to have well, you have to have edit points on, I think. No? I don't know. 
So the only one that seems to be working at this point is to convert point line to Bezier, or however you say that word. What this does is allows you to kind of angle and smooth so that you can get perfect, smooth lines. Um, it's a little tricky. Um, you have to get the hang of it, but it does make for a perfect circle. You can place four points and technically make a perfect circle. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I thought that was supposed to Hmm, very bizarre. Okay, insert allows you to insert any EDO. Um, insert lettering is going to open up your lettering, and this will be any of your fonts that you have <clears throat> in uh, your either your you've created or that are installed in the software. Um, insert super design. This is going to allow you to enter any super designs into your oops. And then insert embroidery. Okay, I get asked this one a ton of times. Someone wants to bring in a VP3, VP4, DST, whatever your your um, suffix is or your end of your design. They want you, they want to bring it into create. The only way to bring an existing design, so anything with VP3, DST, PES, any of those is to click on insert embroidery. So when you choose insert embroidery, now watch. So insert brings up EDO. Insert embroidery brings up VP3. Now, the bad part about this is that it alters the design. So hold on, cancel. So we're gonna get rid of all this. And view. Get rid of my back. Oops. Not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay. All right. So back to home. Okay. So insert. I'm going to grab my desktop real quick. Here's my little ice cream cone. You'll see this again later when we do a zipper pouch. And then, okay, so if you see this, it's all perfect. It has the pattern fill. Everything that I created is there. It's each individual just like it should be because this is an EDO. Now, hopefully this works because sometimes it doesn't. Okay, insert embroidery. I'm going to grab that same thing. Now, this is a VP3 design. I've combined it all. Everything is done, and I'm going to insert that in there. Look at the difference. Okay, my pattern that I had is gone. And the, so it's all grouped right now. So this is the whole group. What used to be this color, this brown color, if you look back up here, same color, it has two simple things, a pattern fill and a satin line. But look how many stitches it is now that it's a VP3 design. Same with the pink color or the ice cream. It separates it out so much that it makes it difficult to actually alter. You very, so it can be done. People are always like, oh, well, I want to adjust this and do this. It can be done. The problem is, is it is not easy. It, it's not some super easy fix. And the other thing is, is if you make this larger, it's going to start gapping and not looking as good. See up here, there's a gap and this is all altered. But if I do the same thing to this one, this one's even bigger. And, oh, I do see that that's, an edit. that's also because it's so small, but it, it 
it needs a little bit of work, but not necessarily what this one needs. It, it didn't change the satin line. It actually kept it thicker, um, whereas this one kept its true measurements. This is a one and a half millimeter satin line. That is a tiny satin line, which is why you're getting that weird look. But when it's a tiny item, it fits. Whereas this one, now if I shrink it back, it kind of just stays kind of the same. Um, I do see now where I need to alter some things. But anyway, plain and simple. The cheeks aren't perfect. The eyes are no longer perfect. So altering a VP3 in Create is possible. It just doesn't work as well. Okay. All right. So let's delete my little ice cream bones. Oops. Oh, it always stays. One color always stays. And this happens to be my brown color. Okay. So that was insert versus insert embroidery. Insert express design into the hoop. Again, this is going to bring up your wizard again, and it's going to put in that design wizard or that already created design. Change hoop, we all know what that is. Life view, that's the one where you get to see it as it should be and design player lets you play it. Okay, quick create. Quick create is one that is very helpful, especially when you have an idea in your head and you're may, you might not be the best artist. Um, I use um, Quick Create a lot to do triangles and squares. It just makes it easier. Circles, things like that. Um, making a circle from scratch is a little bit hard when not using, when not really familiar with it because it will kind of alter the shape. Um, not that it can't be done because it can. But if you don't have a background picture or something, it's just so much easier to do this. So when you choose quick create, freehand create, or point create, you're going to have a lot of the same things. Uh, quick create, color change. So this lets you add another color. If I only have one color, it doesn't do it. So we'll add something. Pattern fill. If you want to do a pattern fill or a motif fill, or shape fill, radio fill, you have so many options. Um, that's what that is. Satin line, this is where you would choose your line. So a running stitch, double stitch, double zigzag, triple stitch, satin line, and a motif line. So um, you can turn one off and leave the other one on. If you say no fill, it's automatically going to default. You can also cl click on the top portion to automatically activate and deactivate. So we're going to go ahead and do pattern fill. Um, applique. Um, this will do an automatic applique for you. Um, it will create, so like, hold on, let's switch. So you could do an applique. You can select the fabric. I'm going to leave it defaulted. I am going to activate it just so you can see it. Quick stitch, quick stitch auto hold. These are used when there is a, a design or something in the background. Oh, hold on, let me put the background view back on. Cool. Okay, so, um, so I want to make her headdress and applique. So if I did that, I would do, if I clicked on quick stitch and then I clicked in the yellow and say, okay, it's going to create an applique out of her headdress. Um, quick stitch plus auto hole is going to do kind of the same thing. Um, it would take out the hole. So I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to switch to pattern fill, no applique, no satin line. And I'm going to do quick stitch and say, okay. Oh, I see. It's not connected there. Okay. So what I was trying to get it to do, let's see if I can do it here. Nope. So technically, let me show you. If this color would have been connected, it would have filled in her face. That's kind of what I was trying to get through to uh, this is that this would fill in her face and then auto stitch hole would be the one you would choose. But because it's not connected, it won't do that. Um, so if there was a hole, so like the letter P, if you had the letter P up on the screen and you did quick stitch, it would fill in the hole for the P. If you do quick stitch plus auto hole, it will take that out. Unfortunately, this was not connected. Okay, shape. The shape is really cool. 
it puts whatever shape you have selected onto your screen and you can make it as big or as small as you want it. I use this a lot when doing eyes and things like that so that I can get that perfect circle. Um, clicking the word shape puts it in. So if you want to change the shape, you click on the shape, the actual physical shape. Um, and then you can choose whatever you want, hit shape again, and then it will put it on there. Okay, I'm going to go back to change color because when you do change color, you can click, if you click on the bottom, it brings up this quick color and you can pick whatever color you want. If you click on the top portion, it opens this and you can put in whatever color you want. Okay. Okay, quick stitch hole. If you wanted to do that, you could select an item. There's no hole, so it doesn't work. Um. Oh, and it'll take it out. So I was really surprised. So if what that really is good for, I'm gonna put this back. And, mm, okay, hold on. I'm going to do something really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in real quick, just so you can kind of get the, the gist of where I'm going with this. Okay, so it's kind of filled in now. Okay, so if I went to my view and we had show grid, that's our grid. We've done that before, get length. I really don't do this. Um, it is not very accurate. If you get do get length and you click here and drag it to here, it says that it's um, 38 millimeters. Now it's 37.4. So I generally use my grid to size anything. Um, edit background, that would allow, take you to the paint window. 2D view, this is where I'm getting at with this. 2D view brings, like fades out the design so that you can see the background behind it. If you go to object view, it 100% shows everything. So back to quick create, quick stitch hole. Okay, so remember, this is all filled in now. So if I click that, it's gonna take out her hair. I'm gonna go back to V, and it's gonna cut out her hair area. So understand? Okay, emboss line, freehand or point. I'll do freehand for this. Uh, you just click and you draw and let go, and it is going to emboss that line. So it pushes it down. Um, this is kind of cool when you want to do like effects. Uh, I've used this for different things to like, if I was doing a solid colored little creature or something and I wanted definition, okay, toes. I've done it with toes. So I like to make the shape of the foot and then I use the emboss line to make the indentions for the toes. Um, Multi-wave line, kind of the same concept. Well, oh, you have to have a multi-wave fill area, which I don't have. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to do that and let's do a square. Okay, so then you can do multi-wave point line and then you can come in here and you can alter it. It's kind of cool. Um, it can give you different effects. So kind of different. Trace, um, you can come in here and you can do satin line trace and you can choose an item and it's going to trace it somewhat kind of weird, but um, let's do quadruple trace. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I, it doesn't like, I don't know why it won't. I guess it wants to fill it in. That's weird. Since quick stitch satin, same thing. It'll fill it in with satin, multiple satin. So it'll cross it over. Um, fill area and line. This is where This is where you go to alter the settings. So if you pattern fill and satin line are selected, or if pattern fill selected, if I had pattern fill and satin line selected, it would have both show up. You can choose your pattern here to whatever you want. You can change the angle and this will be defaulted. So this will be their setting forever until you change it. Satin area, same thing. You can change it, your density, and that's going to be what it is forever until you change it. Okay, quick create from background. Um, kind of the same thing. It will remove all of her, say okay, and then it'll bring you this, and you can do create express embroidery next. It's going to walk you through the exact same thing, and it's going to do it all for you at once, just like you could have done at the beginning, and it removes everything and puts her back in. Okay, freehand create, um, kind of along the same thing as quick create. Color change, you get to add your color change in. Single stitch. When you do single stitch, it picks a point of wherever the last color is. So I was in this red color at the very end. And you just click. And it can be as big or as small as you want. It can be tiny. Or it can be big but it's going to go in a straight line that you click. From wherever you click, it's a straight line. Alignment stitch, if you wanted that to be where you aligned everything, that's where you put it. You can do a stop command. Um, oops, turn that off. Okay, um, pattern fill, again, freehand create pattern fill. You can now just draw, applicate, create area line. Whenever you're doing freehand create or point create, you have to click on create area line for it to actually activate. So let's say I wanted to, this would, hold on. Um, select all visible, please. Okay, so pattern fill and satin line. So I wanna put a satin line and a pattern fill around her head. So I'm gonna hit create area and line. And if I was, very, very, very talented. Oops. <laughs> if you are good and you have a tablet or something that comes in really handy, I, I'm okay when I need to draw something on my own. When I'm copying something, I'm not. And then it fills it in. And because I did not go up and around it filled in the face and it's going to do exactly what you wanted to do and you can come in and edit it whole so we need her face cut out so i'm going to click on hole and i roughly know where it is so i'm going to draw a rough circle <laughs> let go and that's going to put that hole in that selected area you have to have this area selected or hole doesn't work so if i have just this done and i try to draw a hole it won't do it Embossed line, same thing, only it is automatic. It is freehand. Um, Multi-wave line, we did that. Satin area, same thing. Let me do her little eye. That's going to put a satin there. Satin column is a point structure. Okay, let me... So satin column works differently on freehand create and point create than it does anything else. So satin line, hold on, I'm gonna show you satin line. Satin line is just that, a satin line. It does nothing, it is completely the same width everywhere. Satin column allows you to do something called plotting point. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. It's not line. Create area and left, put my ass back. Okay, so satin line. Okay, 
satin column lets you do plot points. So you are going to plot points alternating back and forth, creating that shape. You're going to right click and that is going to fill it in. So satin column is used to make a shape. You could do satin area the same way. Satin column, if I had a letter or something, it would be better. Um, but it lets you really get in there and make it so that it comes in and out and everything. Feathered satin. Okay, white is a bad color. Hold on. <laughs> Properties. There we go. Feather satin makes it look almost like um, a very dense satin, or less dense satin. Um, it, it can give you a shadow. It can um, create something like maybe like steam from a drink or something like that. I don't even know what that word is. I'm not even going to try it, but these little bars. So you would do alternating points, same as the satin column. And when you right click, it puts these bars in there. Tapered motif, same thing. Oops. It's going to be that alternating one again. Right click and it's going to make them big at the top and small at the bottom, depending upon what you wanted to do. Fill area and line, satin column and column. These are again, all of your choices. Um, you can set what you wanted to do. So your fe feathered satin, you could change its den density to higher or lower. Um, you can do both side A and B. So your left or your right side and your stitch length, you can change as well. Um, satin area, same goes. You would change your density. You can add a pattern to your uh, satin area. And it gives you that pattern. Okay. So we're going to home a tab again, select all visible and delete. Point create. Okay, this is where I normally end up. This is how I generally digitize. This is my comfort zone. This is the way that I find that I can do a really good job of digitizing. So what point create is, is kind of what it sounds like. You use points to plot spots on there. So we're going to do pattern fill. Um, again, you have all this applique. I will tell you right now, I do not use the built-in applique feature. I prefer doing color changes in my applique to create my applique versus what they do. They use stops. I use color changes. Okay, so pattern fill, create area line. So I use my zoom to a lot, and I'm going to zoom to her little face. And I want her face to be behind. So hold on, let's discuss this real quick. So when you look at a, a so this piece of art on the screen, you need to decide what you want done first. So anything that you, you do first, so like right now we're getting ready to do color one, it is going to be the first thing that stitches. So it's going to be behind everything else. Okay. So you need to look at a design and say, oh, well, I want her hands to be underneath her cloak. I want her face to be on top of her cloak or I want her face to be under her cloak. So in my opinion, if you're putting on a cloak, it generally should be, your face would be pretty much underneath of it. So that's the way I look at it. Some people look at it as like they want her face to stand out. So they're going to put her face after the little cloak. Uh, so it's, it's a totally personal the personal choice and it's up to you. But I want to do her hair and her face behind her cloak. So I'm going to zoom in, click, and that is zoom to rectangle. I click it and I draw my rectangle. And so I want her face done first. So to me, her face, which is peach, 
should be behind her hair. Her hair sits on top of her face, so the face needs to be first. So I'm going to change my color. So I'm going to right click and save properties. Oh, while we're right click, uh, while we're right clicked, I'm going to show you. Display only selected, display only from start, display only to end, display all objects. These are things that you can click on to show what displays. Cut, copy, paste, duplicate, delete. You all know what that is. Insert color change. So you don't have to necessarily do it here. You can do it here. Insert stop. You don't have to do it here. You can do it here. This is a little bit easier because you can visibly see it. And I'll show you here in a second. Group, ungroup, same thing. Select similar to select similar from visible, select similar from group. So if there was something similar, it would select it. Properties is what we're going to choose on and layout order is you can move forward, backwards. You can also click and drag. Okay. So properties is what we're doing. So we want to change the color so that she has more of a face skin color. Um, we'll go with this one and say, okay. All right. So that's going to change my color to that kind of pink color. It's fine. Okay. So then we're going to create click on create area line. So we want a pattern fill because we want her face to be a pattern fill. And then to create that pattern fill, we need to click on create area line. If we don't click, I right click to get rid of it. If you don't click create area line, I can click all day and nothing's going to happen. Create area line allows you to place those points. And if you look at my mouse, it has a little dot next to it. That means I am ready. If I hit my shift key on my keyboard, it turns to a square. Square versus circle is this. Circle gives you a curved line. Square gives you sharp corners. So I'm going to place my first point here. And remember how I said that we want some kind of overlap. You can set for overlap in their settings. However, it puts overlap on all sides. So I always just simply put it slightly inside of my, my design. Now, again, guys, this is the way I do it. There's a ton of different ways. You just need to kind of find what you like to do. Um, so it's totally up to you. Okay. So once I have that rough shape built in, oops, I'll move this one this way a little bit. Oops, wrong. Okay, there we go. Okay. Once you have that right rough shape put in, and notice that I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, okay, we're doing the face. Wow, it is one of those days. Okay, face. So I want it to be slightly inside the black for her hair because her hair's gonna be going over that. Oh my goodness, if you guys wonder. Okay. And then slightly outside to the yellow and then round. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily be super perf perfect because what needs to be perfect is the stuff you're putting over it. Okay, once I'm done, I'm gonna right click and there's her face. Okay, so I'm going to right click on my step two and do insert color change and then black. That's not really black, but whatever. And then you can do the same thing and do her hair. Okay, so that's kind of how you can use those. And then whole, again, we've done whole and boss line, multiple way of same thing, satin area, satin column, other step, blah, blah, blah. Only this time you're using points to do what you want to. There's the Bezier tool. So, oh, hold on. Okay. So create area line and then the Bezier mode. Let's zoom out. This is that one that I told you that you can basically make a circle with four points. And then you would go home. Okay, hold on. I did that wrong. Okay, there they are. Okay, that's what I wanted. You have to kind of drag it out. 
And I will be real honest with you, I am not the best at this. Okay. So then you can grab these little handles. And you can make a circle. Um, I would highly recommend making a better circle than that, but that gives you kind of the point of how that Bezier mode works. So you basically, if you don't drag the lines out, you can click on them again and grab those lines. Okay, but And then you right click to set the lines or set the points. So that's for anything. Whenever you're doing this, oops, I'm going to turn this off. Whenever you're doing this, so I draw my shape and I right click, that's how you set the points. So the points stay and you can move them around. until you right click. Once you right click, the points are set. Double click does the same thing, so be very careful because you, then you have to undo. Okay, edit. Um, draw a previous color block. Draw next color block. Display all objects. Um, you can slowly get rid of them. Uh, only select it, only from start, only to end. Display all objects. Um, you can hide specific things. You can hide lines, you can hide fills, you can hide satin areas, columns, single stitches, you can hide the stops and colors, and then you can display objects back. Um, groups, you can hide those and Apple Pays as well. Delete, you can delete your hole, you can delete your embossed line, and you can delete your multi-wave. Um, break apart. So if you have multiple things, you can break them apart. Reversal. You can change it. Manage my fills. <gasps> Finally found it. I've been looking everywhere for this. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of cool. You can create your own fills and we will do that later. Uh, for some reason, I lose this thing all the time. <laughs> I'm always looking and searching for it and then I'll find it and then I'll forget again. But select similar. Again, you can select similar. So like if you had something selected, you could select similar. I am in, so I can select it and then select similar from visible and it'll select this one. So it has anything that's similar to that, it will select. Um, properties, you can change your properties here. Um, applique, favorites, you can add a borderline okay and that's going to put a borderline around it because it's selected all similar it did that okay view all right guys so this is very important view tab i when we start digitizing i will have you change the grid all the time because i use the grid to get specific sizes because it's easier than using that get link thingy so a lot of times, so if you notice that mine's at 12.7, that is a half an inch. 12.7 is a half an inch and 25.6, I think is a, or no, 25.4 is a full inch. So uh, I will have you change your grid a lot. Um, and we will always use millimeters, not inches. Um, the reason is, is because millimeters are more exact than inches because we can't really get seven sixteenths of an inch on a grid. I mean, I guess you could, but it'd be really hard. Anyway, so this is kind of why we, um, I use millimeters. Okay, get length, I already showed you, edit background. When you click on that, it opens the paint window. Um, show grid turns it off and on. I always have my grid on. And the size determines what size the grid is. Um, 3D view, we did 2D object view. Again, kind of the same thing. You can change your hoop. You can show your design panel, not show it. Film strip, show it. Okay, help. If you needed help, you could go here um, and it connects you to the internet. So if you're not connected to the internet, the help does not really work. Oh, about my digitizing sew sewing, we'll show you what version you are on. I just updated, so I am on the newest version. Okay. Um, oh, let's go home. All right. So this is what's called the film strip. 
So a lot of times when I am doing things and we are actually digitizing, things will come out of my mouth like click on step five in the design panel. So I literally want you to click on step five. So one, two, three, four, five, and click on it. And then a lot of times I'll say right click, which is gonna pull up the menu. Um, these are each individual step that you have created. And if you click on them, it selects them. And right now I'm in edit points. If I was on box select, it would put a box around it. Okay, sorry about that, my phone fell. Okay. So you got that. Um, so film strip. So film strip is on the left. And when I say click on step four in the film strip, I want you to click on the fourth one in the film strip on the left. Design panel. This is where you get information. Design panel is going to give you your stitch count, how many colors you have, your design size. You can change the color. You can get Um, so if you have multiple colors or anything, you can click that. I don't have that. So, um, you can put a color and I can change the color. I can double click on this one and change the color. This is the only place you can do that. You cannot double click on this to make the chip color change. You have to right click and go to properties and then you can do it from here. But this is the only place you can double click on anything to actually activate another menu. Notes and settings, if you wanted to put in here, um, test sub, oops, edit. You have to click on the pencil to get to type. You can type in edit or friend or whatever you're doing. And then say, okay, you can do whatever. Um, the settings um, and then edit. You can put what settings you have in there. This will retain those settings as well. So let's say you were creating a VP3 design for a friend and you wanted to remember what settings you had. So you could come in here and you could click on settings and edit and you could type in pattern fill three for cat or whatever you're doing and then say, okay, that will actually retain that. Uh, so that you can see that later on, even when you open it up as a VP3. This stuff remains with the design. Um, clipboard, um, this is just what that is. Overview, I'm not 100% sure what overview is. Let's see, let's copy something really quick. Let's do this, copy, okay, overview. Oh. I don't know what overview is. Nothing changes and nothing happens. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, not sure what that is. I'll have to look that up and figure it out later. Okay, down here, the very bottom, you have little icons. This one is move design pattern up. So if I wanted to move that, I'm not moving a group. Oh, I know why it won't move it because there has to be a color with it. I got it. Okay. So this one would move to the very front beginning or the end of the design to the back of the design. The back of the design is actually step one. <laughs> um, then this moves up individually. This moves down individually. This moves to the front of the design, which is where it's at. Um, It'll show groups design. So if I had something grouped, it'll show that. And Slack last visible. So like if I was up here and there was something so down, I could click on this quickly to get to the bottom so that I could add something new. Um, edit points, box select, freehand select, point select, select all visible and select none. So if you did, so let's say you were on point create tab and you were in here working and you created something and you're like, oh, I need to edit the points. You wouldn't necessarily have to go back to the home tab. You can simply hit here and you can edit the points. Oops. Okay. And then when you edit points, a lot of people are like, oh, how do you set them? Because remember, um, when we create something, we right click to set. But when we edit points, 
they're already set. So you just move on to whatever you want to do from there. You don't have to right click or anything. You just move on. Okay. Shows you where you're at. Um, tells you what hoop you are. Tells you that you are on a blue pattern fill. Um, this is zoom to rectangle. I, this is so important when digitizing. You will use this so much. However, oh, let me show you. So when I'm doing pattern fill and I do create area line and I'm doing this and I'm like, oh, I need to zoom in here. If I click on zoom to rectangle and zoom in, I am not back on to creating an area until I click on create area line again. Okay. Um, zoom to rectangle or zoom to hoop or whatever that one says, zoom to fit. This is the percentage of zoom and this is the zoom. Okay. That's it guys. That is the digitizing module in a nutshell. Um, I know that was pretty quick. Oh, did you want to go over the things at the top? Anyway, insert, this is insert an EDO, not insert embroidery, save, save as, export, print, change hoop undo, redo, and life view thing. So, oh, let's do that really quick. So when you do file, there is save. And if you haven't saved it first, the first time it comes in, it's going to say EDO. Okay. Digitizing module only saves as EDO. The keyword there is saves. Okay. File export. Oops. Okay. Let me change my hoop. Stop. file export this is going to give you your export screen so you can choose what export file you want so if you need that dst pes whatever you need you can choose it um optimize for sewing combine remove overlap color sort optimize stitch length um i will tell you right now combine and remove overlap do not play into this um you have to remove your own overlap in the uh, digitizing part. It doesn't do it for you. That's why I said you have to put it just slightly above that. Um, decoration, again, that doesn't apply. Hoop orientation doesn't really matter. These are on my default, so I do not get to select them. Anyway, color sort lets you color sort, optimize stitch length, takes out any little tiny stitches. So you do want to be careful with this. Um, if you've done something, a little tiny design, and you know that there's a little tiny uh, stitches, turn that off. Um, <laughs> cause otherwise it might remove something that you really need. Okay. Then you would say, okay. Then it would let you save it just like normal and say export and your design is saved as that BP4, BP3, PES, whatever. Okay. That's it for today. That's basically getting to know it. The key things when we really get started are going to be the home tab and knowing what's on it, the edit points and things like that. Uh, point create. This is the one we're going to use a lot that and quick create. Um, also the view tab and knowing where that grid is so that you can change the size quickly. These are the things that I'm going to, that we are going to use come time for us to start our digitizing, actual digitizing. So mine are home tab, quick create, point create, and the view tab. Those are the ones that I will constantly switch between. So get familiar with those um, and we'll get going. So what we're going to do next is go into full on digitizing. And the first thing I'm gonna teach you guys to digitize is a zipper pouch. These are so popular. I see them everywhere. There's so many designs. It's really fun and easy to create your own. Now, the way we're going to do this is twofold. The first way is on the computer. I'm going to show you how to create the stitches to create this bag. The other thing I'm going to show you is each step as it stitches, because to understand the how to digitize it, you have to understand how to stitch it out. Um, that's all part of the whole digitizing. You know, if you 
you need to figure out what steps go first, what steps do what. So it'll be a combination of working on the computer and seeing exactly what you're doing. So I hope this works out good. Um, our next video should hopefully post by Thursday next week. I'm really, really, really going to try to um, do it before that. But um, I couldn't post earlier than this because we're getting ready for a spur of the moment camping trip to go kayaking. And... I'm going kayaking this weekend, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to have time. Anyway, next video, zipper pouch. We are going to learn to digitize, so we will be full on creating a usable project, um, and it will be digitizing a zipper pouch, and we will do that next week. All right, guys, that's it. If you want to learn, keep up with my videos and make sure you don't miss anything, do go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to follow me on Facebook to see things that I do and get all the up-to-date information, go ahead and um, friend me or like my page on Stitching with Stephanie at Facebook. You can also follow me on Instagram. Um, Stitching with Stephanie is there as well. Okay, guys, that's it. I hope you really like this video. And I know I went fast and I know it's a lot of information, but getting to know it and actually using it are two different things. And so we are getting ready to actually use it and make actual usable products. So, all right, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time.